Ready? Okay. I think we're all here. Um, I'm going to call the Common Council meeting to order. Tuesday, December 10th, 2019, at 6.04 p.m. Roll call. Alderperson Madden is absent. Alderperson Kubaki? Here. Alderperson Inglehart? Here. Alderperson Kapusta? Here. Alderperson Boardman? Here. Alderperson Hamill is absent. Alderperson Wolf? Here. We have a quorum present. Thank you. And statement of public notice? This meeting was noticed in accordance with the open meeting law. And communications, uh, I have none other than this is our last meeting for the year, and I wish everyone a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Um, and now we're rolling into public comment. I had a few brought up just to remind anybody who wants, who wishes to speak, it must pertain to an agenda item and need to fill out a form and bring it up here to either Jill or I. Thank you. So with that, Deborah Bolton. And of course, state your name and address when you get up to the microphone. You, I think you know how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Deb Bolton, West 186, South 75, 43, Kenwickson Drive. Uh, I'm here to speak on the rezoning of the formerly known as the Ingold property. Um, I spoke before at the public hearing. You guys are aware of that. Um, even though I am going to divert slightly, I know it's not on the agenda, but one thing related to this that I do want is when you guys get to approving other agendas, can you please uh, make a note to change uh, my comments from the um, plan commission? Um, I was misquoted. Uh, one of the things that I had stated in there was, um, you know, since 2015, this is now 2019, 2020, things change. One of the things that is changing is across the street from this development is the school is going to be developed. And that was my verbiage. The school is going to be developed, and we're fairly certain something's happening to that big old playground. It's not going to be a big piece of grass anymore. That was my wording. Instead, what I was quoted was is that the school is going to be demolished, and therefore that my statement was wrong and it could be dismissed. I don't believe my statement was wrong and it shouldn't be dismissed. That's something you need to take into consideration when you're thinking about this. You need to think about the whole and how has the community changed. And back in 2015, that was a viable school and that was a big open playground. That is not going to be the case. That is going to change in some way. I'm guaranteeing it. So you got to think, you got to look at what's going on as a whole in the community. You know, so this is different than what we were looking at in 2015. Um, I did a little more looking at our zoning because you know, my comment has been this is too much stuff. This is too many buildings in too little a space. Um, it's, it's not meeting the same open space requirements as an RM3 zoning. And that's really not fair from that perspective to the existing neighbors. They were expecting something that looks like them. When you're, you know, when you're hovering at a satellite view and you're looking down on this development, it should look like what's next to it. And this does not. This, is, this simply does not. It does not have the open space. It doesn't have the big yards. It's a lot of buildings in very small space. So I've been trying to think, how can we get there? And in looking at our zoning, there's actually another residential multifamily zoning that's on the books. It's RM3. Mm -hmm. So a recommendation that I have is, why do we keep shoehorning for RM2? Why don't we suggest that, fine, we will allow multifamily, but instead use the RM3 expectation? What's the differences, I say? Well, instead of you know, 10,000 square feet required for a lot for an RM2, it's 20,000. This is a little bit more, I will tell you, it is a little bit more than residential. Residential three is only 15,000. Um, also, the open space. It requires 10,000 square feet of open space instead of the 7,000 for RM2. So a little more. But that is right in line with RS3. So right there, that's solving my problem. I want yards. I want open space. I don't want it all covered with buildings and driveways. It matches RS3. So to me, I see that as a really good solution. Now, the downside to that, well, when you're requiring more open space, you're requiring more, foot, more square footage per building. That, If I do my math correctly, that takes you down to 11.45 dwellings, which, since these are duplexes, okay, now you're talking 
10, now you're talking five buildings instead of eight. Now, this in the, if I know PDs allow um, a 10% bonus on density, if that can apply to that density calculation, maybe this is a place we apply it, where we say, eh, you know, you're, you're just missing 12. We'll give you a little bonus so you can have 12 dwellings, you can have six buildings. I think that is a really good compromise. I'm not against multifamily. I don't think they're feeding us a line that these things are going to sell for 350,000. I've seen the stampedes for the for the, you know, for the uh, duplex condominiums. They're stampedes when these things hit the re when they hit the real estate market. So I don't disagree with that at all. I I I think that, you know, if they if they are as luxury development as they're talking, then to have nice big yards is going to absolutely appeal to their market share, to their market base. Because their market base is Muskego residents who are baby boomers who are retiring and who are, air quote, downsizing, probably from the family home that they raised their children that actually has less square footage than these condos are going to have. But they're going to have fewer bedrooms. They're going to have big bedrooms and big bathrooms that they can get their wheelchair and walker in when they have their knee replacement surgery. So having big yards, having space, being able to look out and still see wildlife walking through the yards, that's their customers. That's what they're used to. They're used to having a yard. So I don't think expecting this development to have a little more open space is a bug. I think it's a feature. Um, it's something that can be sold as, yeah, this is a higher end development. And yeah, you're, you're going to pay a little bit more for it. And I think they're still going to make tons of freaking money because if they build, you know, six buildings instead of eight or nine, well, you don't have the building costs. So I think that is a really decent solution for this. Um, you know, and, and regardless of whatever we decide for zoning for this, any development is going to have to meet that 75% open space. And quite honestly, <clears throat> I don't see how that can. I really don't. I mean, just looking at that, I do not see how 75% of that is green. I just, I don't. I can't see that. So it, it's going to run into a wall at the BSO at some point. Uh, so I, I hope you're listening. I hope you take my suggestion and, and, and we'll give it um, some good thought. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Robert Bleasy. To the microphone, please. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Robert you. Bleasy, South 77 West 17458, St. Leonard's Drive. It's hard to follow, Debbie. Uh, my concerns basically are, if you look at the map, last time we had them up on the TV screens, uh, basically, if you look at our lot sizes in comparison to the lot sizes of this uh, uh, development, uh, as Debbie has said and as everybody last week said, this is definitely a large complex shoehorned into a, a very small lot. Uh, my main objection or, or problem is if you look at the upper right-hand corner, they're going to build some retention walls. Now these, I'm assuming, are meant to divert the water. They don't want the water to come down from that hill into their, their, uh, onto their lots. Um, so therefore, it may, uh, I'm assuming it will divert it into our backyards again. And right now, all of, our, all of our sump pumps run, run constantly. We have a lot of water running off that hill into our yards. I'm hoping those walls will, I don't know what they'll do, other than exacerbate our problems. Um, I know a last meeting you had mentioned, Mayor, that uh, you were going to try to get one building eliminated from the nine. We're hoping that that's a possibility. We'd like to see, as Debbie said, a fewer number. Uh, um, at, like she said, an overview. We'd like it to look exactly like all of the housing in, the, in that subdivision. All single families uh, would be the best for us. We'd like to see less traffic uh, pouring out onto Janesville. I'm assuming we'll have to have another traffic light uh, to take care of the traffic from this complex and uh, what's going to happen across the street when they do the school and then the apartment buildings behind that. Uh, we'd like to keep it as uh, low-key as possible. 
that's about all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. And then Dar Darlene Bleasy. Darlene Bleasy, South 77, West 17458, St. Leonard's Drive. Um, just like my husband and Debbie said before, we're worried about how many. We know eventually there's going to be something there, and we'd like to bring the number down a little bit. Everybody keeps talking about water problems, and I know it was brought up about engineers. We'll take care of that. I worked for an engineering firm. Engineers can be wrong. Look at the deep tunnel project in Milwaukee. I mean, they usually go by the 100-year flood events. They have been wrong before. When it comes to water flow, engineers can be wrong too. I just think it would be a lot easier on all of us if we could just keep the number down, not shoehorn so many units in one small area. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that uh, concludes the public comment period. Uh, we'll roll into unfinished business. Ordinance 1440, an ordinance to amend the zoning map and 2020 comprehensive plan of the City of Muskego Home Path Financial LP from B3 and RS3 to PD as the second reading. So we do need a motion to approve. Move to approve. And a second, please. You need a second to second. talk. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, um, Adam will come up first, and I know that the uh, developer's here, and they will follow Adam. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of go over for those of you that weren't able to look at the full packet or weren't at the Planning Commission meeting, um, go over some of the comments that were addressable. You know, not all comments are always addressable, but ones that seem to be a little more um, resonating or addressable, we can kind of go over quick. Um, so there was talk about concern with the amount of green space. Um, so as, as was mentioned by a few people, there's a 75% magic number that we hear about with open space very often. Um, for, not everyone may know, um, the zoning code actually sets a set square footage for open space for all properties in the city. But because the city has a lot of non-conforming lots, like lake lots are a perfect example because a lot of them are substandard given when they were divided. Um, the, the city has an alternative that says if you can't meet the set square footage open space, you are allowed to use then the calculation of 75% open, 25% consumed. So the code gives that advantage to those that don't even, so there's some, a lot of lake lots that don't even meet the minimum open space with the lot size altogether. So that's an alternative that's in the zoning code when somebody can't meet the set square footage. By default, we always first say, are they meeting the set square footage? And uh, I have the zoning code up right now. In the RM2 and the RM3 district, both of those districts require 10,000 square feet of open space per, uh, I'm sorry, 7,000 square feet of open space per dwelling unit. Um, so the engineers, that's one thing I reached out to them this week because obviously I want to speak accurately about this. Um, and what they did is based upon the development size and the number of units, um, if the requested unit count, which is 18 units, would be allowed, the development provides a total of 1,777,257 1 square feet. Um, based upon the total um, development size for 18 units, um, they have to keep open at least 126,000 square feet. So they are exceeding the required open space without any kind of waiver, without a planned development. If they were asking for a straight RM2, RM3 zoning, they meet and exceed the amount of required open space because the percentage only comes into play when you can't meet the set square footage. The set square footage for the code is always the preferred method. And other than existing non-conforming lots, most lots, and I'll use new subdivisions as a perfect example, um, they follow the square footage requirement, not the percentage, because the square footage works better for most people. And since most lots are compliant, that's the number we would typically use. So they do meet the open space, um, as well as they are accounting for stormwater, and I think their engineer may talk about that a little bit. Um, as far as... Um, Let's see here, some other comments. There's some comments about what changed from before. I know we went over this a little bit before, but um, you know, the biggest change from before to now um, with why the property didn't develop before was really the family that lived there. The Ingold family lived in, this, in that property for a very long time. Um, there were other developers that were working with them. The hardest part was they didn't want to leave their home. The Ingold family had a lot of tie to that home, and a lot of memories in that home, and they didn't want to leave. And the way their house was positioned on the frontage of this lot, because this lot doesn't have a lot of frontage, it widens out in the back, it was very, um, I won't say unfeasible, but very difficult to try to get a road in next to their home. So once the Ingold family was willing to 
to leave the, the property, leave the home, um, that made this development more feasible where it wasn't prior because of that house being able to be removed out of the picture. Um, just reaffirming, traffic will go on to Janesville Road, not Westwood. That was one of the comments that came up a couple times in the last meeting. Uh, as far as those retaining walls go that are mentioned, um, you know, they are shown on the plan up here. Um, there is a grading plan available in our office, but we did look at this in the planning staff, engine, and engineering staff. These buildings will be on the low side of those walls. I think there was some concern last time, are the buildings going to be high and then shedding water over these walls into neighboring properties? These buildings will be lower than the walls. The walls are just there because there is um, a natural slope in that part of the site. And since their site's going to be lower, so a lot of the runoff from these buildings, these walls will prevent it from going to the neighbor's property. The grading plan shows swales behind these buildings that are in that area by the retaining walls. So their runoff would hit a wall that's above them before it would ever get to a neighbor's property. It's kind of a hump between them and the neighbor. As well as our engineering staff knows in a staff meeting that if this does go forward, there needs to be special attention paid to that area to make sure no additional runoff goes off that way. Now, some of those neighboring lots do get runoff, some, some properties to the east. If a property that's not part of this to the east always drain that way, that's still going to change. This developer can't change offsite drainage. Um, and from looking at the existing drainage maps we have, this isn't a plan. This is existing fact we have. Um, a handful of the water that goes in those backyards is from other properties on Westwood that this property, the way it's proposed to be graded, wouldn't affect. <clears throat> as far as um, flooding in the area and things like that, I know there were some comments about there being um, wetlands on the property. Um, the city has confirmation from a certified wetland professional, Vary Smith National, um, that they checked this site out. It was three or four years ago, and these markings are good for at least five years, to certify, and they're certified by the DNR to say such that there are no wetlands anywhere on the property. So that's something, once we have that confirmation, that, that shouldn't really be questioned any longer. <clears throat> as far as floodplain goes, there were some comments of people noting that they thought this area used to be floodplain. Um, I looked at all of the city's floodplain maps. So there's floodplain maps that date back to 1981 or 1982, um, were the first maps the city had, and those were updated about five or ten years ago. Um, there's never been floodplain mapped by FEMA anywhere in this area. Now, that doesn't mean there couldn't be low spots on the lot. I mean, lots all over the place can have low spots, um, but that doesn't make it a floodplain. And there is no legal floodplain, meaning there's, you know, if it's floodplain, we have a whole different set of rules we have to follow. And there is no floodplain here, and those maps are available. There's no floodplain even within like a mile or so of this. Like, you have to go to the lake to start getting floodplain. <clears throat> As far as um, the school across the street, and I apologize to Ms. Bolton if we misspoke uh, in the minutes and we can get that changed, um, but we were going to just clarify, yeah, that there wasn't any plan to tear it down, but we do acknowledge that there are you know, new proposals there, new approvals there that could change the area. <clears throat> as far as um, there were some comments about existing condos in the city not being filled, and that's something I guess we just wanted to make a statement of. Um, Condos right now can't be built fast enough. That doesn't mean that they're there for everybody. You know, apartment and rentals are more predominant in the state, nation, you know, in the statewide. Um, you know, we're not alone to that. But the condos that are being built are being marketed to very specific types of individuals that are buying them like hotcakes. Um, we looked as of December 2nd, which was the most recent update we could find. Um, the Glenet Pelman Farms, which is um, the current condo developments being proposed, which would be similar to this. I'm not saying exactly the same, but very similar. Um, out of there units. They only had three units remaining in buildings that aren't even built yet. So they, a lot of the buildings they still have to build. They have three units left to be sold starting at a price of $445,000. So as far as value goes and desirability, um, they can't build them fast enough. Uh, <clears throat> as far as, um, you know, there's some comments too about you know, too much development is pushing people away. Um, that's one thing that, I mean, Mesquite was a growing community. You know, obviously it's always trying to develop and grow in a smart way, you know, hence why we do a lot of the planning that we do. Um, but it's something that I, am, I, I don't, I've never heard from the council at least, and in our planning that we don't want to allow things to grow or change or evolve in this city. Uh, as far as property values dropping, um, one of the things, I know this was done back in 2015 when the same proposal was done with the last version of it. Um, there was questions about some comments of um, value being deteriorated because of the condos in the area. Um, in looking at, there's nine homes that abut this property with an average value when you average the nine homes of about $270,000, um, which is a good amount. Um, and then these condos are expected to start at about three twenty-five. dollars So definitely nothing that should deteriorate any values in the neighborhood. If anything, hopefully it would help boost values. Uh, now that has nothing to do with the unit count, you know, whether it's 16 or 18, a price is a price. Um, 
just wanted to give that comparison for, for openness. <clears throat> um, like I said, anything relating to stormwater, I know there's a lot of concerns with drainage. And like I said, the engineer I think is here or the development team to talk about this a little bit more. But just in conf uh, talking to our engineering department, um, they have already um, got through their first round of engineering comments. Um, any things that have been brought up at these meetings have been forwarded onto them for drainage concerns as they've been doing their preliminary review. And um, I'm not a stormwater expert any means, but in talking to Scott Crager, the Public Works Development Director, he was kind of showing me on their um, stormwater plan, because they have a plan to show how they're handling stormwater. Um, the amount of volume that this site will be reducing is significant, and I'm sure their, their development team can talk more about this. But they are required by MMSD and DNR to have significant reduction, and they are meeting those requirements in the preliminary stage where they're at right now. Um, the only other things worth noting, um, the plan commission, you know, had this discussion last week. For those of you who don't know, the plan commission's recommendation was um, to recommend 16 units rather than the 18. So, you know, we have to bring that forward. Um, and things that we wanted to kind of bring up to is, as part of a typical rezoning request, grading plans and storm management calculations are not typically provided. So, you know, it's nice that we are able to talk about some stormwater and management. It's nice we're able to know what the retaining walls are going to do. It's nice that we know what some of the preliminary grading is going to do. But that, that shouldn't be a factor of approving a certain density, whether it's two units, 10 units, 20 units, doesn't matter. Stormwater can always be addressed, and any engineer can tell you that. Yes, things can get, you know, you design it one way, does something different, you can always correct that. Um, but, you know, the professionals that do this, that, that's what they dedicated their schooling and career to, so we have to roll up, put some reliance that they're giving it their best to try to make sure it does what it needs to. Any okay, thank questions? Or, I don't know. Yeah. Did you want to let the developer come up? Or sure. Why don't no, we have the developer didn't. come up and then we can ask questions. So, um, okay, the developers, did you want to come up here? My name is Ed Woodland from HomePath Financial, representing the developer, and um, we appreciate your time tonight. We wanted to talk about what our proposal includes and what it doesn't include. I think there's a lot of things flying around that are not accurate. We wanted to try and address some of them. The property is currently zoned partly commercial in the front and then residential in the back. We proposed the, the plan development because we thought this represented a, a compromise to the community where it's not really a commercial site. It's got small frontage, as people have mentioned, so it's not really a high visibility site. Does not really make sense for commercial. From an economic standpoint, we propose the duplex product because one of the advantage of that is it, it allows us to get um, nine buildings and 18 total units, but the buildings will look like a single family residence. So we thought that was the best combination that would match closely to the existing property and the existing neighborhood without drafting away from that, uh, without taking away from that. The other thing, you know, we talked a lot about uh, uh, drainage. Our engineer, Craig Donzi, is here, and as Adam just mentioned, our post-development drainage will be significantly less. Our water is really not headed towards the adjacent properties. We think we're going to solve some of the adjacent properties' problems with drainage by building the retaining walls. And if you see on our plan, we have two large retention ponds, too. They will address, I think, virtually all of the storm drainage issues that some of the adjacent properties are, are showing, too. Um, to talk about the value, Adam is correct. We're proposing to start anywhere from 325 to 350. So we think our product is going to enhance the value in the neighborhood, not take away from the value in the neighborhood. Um, um, the road we intend to build, uh, we've, we're, there's some issues on Janesville Road that we're working with the county that's going to clean up some of the right-of-way issues. It also benefits the buildings to the, uh, I guess it would be the, to the north where the popcorn place is, mm -hmm. would allow them to access off of our public street to enhance their parking for allow them, their, those businesses, to, to work more efficiently. Um, also wanted to talk a little bit about the previous approval from uh, 2015. Uh, everybody's talking about 16 units were approved, 16 units were approved, and that's not really correct. 16 new units were approved, but there was also the existing Ingold House and the existing Ingold outbuildings that were also in the approved uh, that were proposed to stay. 
So there's really a total of 18 units, um, 17 dwelling units, and one outbuilding that were still approved to be. So we're not increasing the, the, the previous approval for dwelling units. We're really matching it when you take into consideration the other house that was still there as well. Um, we did meet with the adjacent owners this summer too and um, at the library and we showed them our plans. We had open discussions with everybody with it, that attended. A lot of the folks that are here were there and they did not seem to, there were some expressions of uh, questions about drainage and we answered them the same way we're answering them now with our engineer was present as well. Craig was there as well. Um, and the, the public, the people that came out to talk to us were generally excited about that. We thought that we were going to um, uh, bring value to the community and we thought that was going to be beneficial to everybody that was going to be involved. Um, we've heard a lot of comments about the density and the condos in the area too, but if you look at our product uh, that we're proposing for the property, we're at a much lesser density than some of the other areas around the apartments and other uh, products that are in the area. And again, we felt that the duplexes were as close as we could get to be economically feasible to allow us to match the single family homes that are in the neighborhood. Um, and somebody mentioned traffic tonight. We've done a traffic impact analysis and the, the homes that we built there do not require a traffic light on the site as well. So that our impact of our development will not require a traffic light. Craig, I don't know if you want to come up and talk a little bit more about drainage and, and stormwater, just to kind of explain that to everybody else. I'm Craig Donzie with Payne and Dolan, out of Brookfield, Wisconsin. So we, uh, it's it's a little unusual, as Adam said, to take a development to this level of design completion when you're asking for rezoning, particularly in this community. Um, we felt that was important for a couple reasons. One, you as elected officials needed to see that level of detail. Um, we were sensitive to the to the discussions, the some of the controversy involved in 2015 when you considered this the last time. Uh, and secondly, when we met with the neighbors this summer, we needed to be able to have answers to them that, that we could be confident with and stand behind. So I hope you appreciate the level of investment that Home Paths made, one, in owning this site. They, they've purchased that site. And secondly, they've um, entrusted us and spent some money with us to to take this project from a design completion perspective significantly farther than we were when you saw this last in 2015. So that was really a sketch you saw the last time. We're significantly farther along with that. Uh, another large change um, that we've worked closely with Adam and Scott, at your staff, on was to put a public road into this site. So private, previously this was a private road feeding condominiums. Um, this is a public street. There's significant benefit to the community in having a public street and your EMS services, there's significant benefit to those homeowners in having not having the burdens of private streets as long-term uh, expenses within their condominium ownership structure. So this, there's a lot of unique things about this development. Um, there is an additional expense that comes with a public street, um, and I think that's one of the reasons that we've worked pretty hard to get the 18 units into here and make it look nice, make it connect up with Janesville Road politely. The county, we've been working with them to dispose of some excess right away along Janesville Road to kind of clean that line up. It'll allow uh, this development to, to finish and, and, and continue that, that border pattern along Janesville Road, formalize that a little more like it looks up and down the corridor. You guys put a lot of money into that street. Um, I think this project will allow you to finish that little segment there that's still kind of in that unfinished condition because of the real estate condition. Uh, from a water quality perspective, so those ponds are large. They're large intentionally. There's a lot of water that comes from off-site through this site. Um, and so those ponds are, are picking up a significant amount of that water and treating it before it's released to the creek to the east. That's not required. Um, the reason we're doing that is because there are ponding conditions on this site presently. It's not wetlands, but in, the, you know, in, in these shoulder months, we do see some standing water out there. So there's a, a lot of water that comes down the hill. This was an old pasture. Um, and kind of sits in that low area. So these ponds are oversized, and that's reflected by Adam's comments, what, what Grafe has seen from us in a stormwater report and what Scott Krieger has seen. He's right. We're, we're, we're exceeding MMSD's requirements because we've got a lot of off-site drainage. Instead of just passing the buck and pushing that water through, complicating some of the neighbors that are here tonight's um, squishy backyards, we've taken the conscious decision to invest in larger ponds. We've got the open space to do it. Um, and so these ponds are big. 
and they're big intentionally. And I, I hope you appreciate that. Um, that's a conscious decision to be a good neighbor, to make this development at this density fit politely uh, into this neighborhood. It is duplexes, but it, it's going to fit politely in there. It's going to look sharp when it's done. It's a high quality product. Um, and Home Path is a, is a really good citizen. We've worked with them in a number of communities in southeast Wisconsin as they've come into town over the last several years. They're good people. They're honest people. Um, they've been a pleasure to work with uh, from our perspective as painted on. We uh, are happy to be here. Thank you. Uh, with that, any questions or discussion? Hmm. Actually, can I ask, Adam, can I ask you one question? Because it came up um, that in the 2015, uh, 16 units were approved, yes. but then they mentioned there was the house and building. Does that get included in that? I just, I just want to understand it before we move um, I, I don't remember how the density shook out. Yeah, we, we always knew it was going to be there. The way that I think we reviewed it was, you know, that front area where the house did sit till recently mm -hmm. was noted as commercial. And we knew that that house wasn't commercial, um, but we knew that there would be a home there until the time a business, until the time the home would go away and a business would go there. So, yeah, you could, I mean, the, the ordinance didn't specifically talk about it, you know, talked about what was being newly proposed, but yeah, the original proposal was to keep the house with the 16 units until the time that a commercial business chose to go there, if it could fit on the lot that so was left. So then I think their wording was an added 16 units. Uh, I believe okay. so, yeah. It was what was new. It's that I'm pretty sure. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't have the to what it was there. Just that to make sure date in front of me. But yeah, the house was planned to remain until mm -hmm. whatever time the Ingalls were going to go away until they realized the road didn't really work with it. Okay, thanks. Are there any other questions? I just, Adam, know. based upon your conversation tonight, is this going to be now 18 units or 16? I'm a little well, confused. So the, the, their proposal, so yep. we can only react to the applicant's proposal, is 18 units. Okay. Um, Plan Commission gives a recommendation on any rezoning, right. especially if it's a unit count. They can uh, they can't give more. They can give what's requested or, or less. Um, Plan Commission's recommendation was 16. The ordinance in front of you is still their request, which is at 18. Okay. Um, is how it's written right now. Okay. Well, I I know what, when when I voted on the on the 16 back in 2015. It was only because it was residential already. And I was allowing increased use of residential where there already was residential. I had, guess I had always hoped, well, now when I saw the Ingold property go away, I guess I was thinking that somebody with a little imagination would come by and, and develop that all as a commercial site. Um, unfortunately, I guess that hasn't happened. But I, I can't, I can't, I don't think it belongs there um, in, in light of, the, of the, the change in the property. And I, I guess I, I, I would not go for the 18. I would definitely go for a 16, if anything. But I had really hoped, like I said, that somebody with a little imagination would have come by and found a way to develop this commercially seems how there's commercial on the west side of it this commercial on the east side of it it's commercial across the street um, it, it's totally surrounded by by commercial property why you would want to stick something in there now that's residential is it's kind of baffling to me i i realize it's got a small frontage but that's what that's what imagination is guys and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed to see this kind of development. I guess I feel a little bit like the individual that was here last week that said that maybe this is just kind of inevitable um, because it's the least, you know, it, if, if you're going to develop it at all, it looks like this would work. But, geez, I just can't go with the more, more and more units. I, 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 it's way too tight. Um, I don't think comparing it favorably with uh, Pelman Farms that like, like we did uh, is, is, is justified. Pelman Farms is $100,000 more. <laughs> 
So I don't think it's I don't think it's a good apples and apples thing. But um, uh, why it's even residential? It was residential because the end goals were there and they were ever. Mm -hmm. They're gone. It's a whole new blank slate. So the the existing zoning is it's predominantly a, residential RS3. The, yes. Only the frontage is an RS3. And if you if you develop it as an RS3, I guess I could go along with that. But but it to me it's like a blank slate now. It should be why why in the middle of a of on Janesville Road where we've strived in the sin in the center of our city to bring some commerce in, bring some commercial properties in, give people something to do in the downtown rather than drive through it and go on their way to some other downtown area. Why why would you stick a residential area? It just it just doesn't seem to fit right. And I would I you know if anything, it's a 16, but it's not an 18. Here. Alderman Kubaki. Um, i just speak in favor of the proposed development for a number of reasons. Um, and not to rehash what everybody else has said. Uh, first of all, I, I can't imagine the neighbor's reaction or my reaction if I lived there to have a commercial site back there rather than a residential site. I, I, I can't. Uh, to me, it's not even feasible. Uh, the water issue is a big issue, and while this development may not completely resolve the problems, or even even resolve the problems that the neighbors have, it at, won't add to the problem as it's happening right now, where the water's coming off that hill and uh, going down to the south. Uh, uh, I know there's a home on the south side of um, uh, Saint uh, Saint the, the, the Saint Leonard's Drive, or where. There's tons of rock piled up against a, a house, and I can see why, because the water just seems to flow through there. The second thing that the developer mentioned is feasibility, economic feasibility. Um, we've had two or several different proposals for this area, all of which have been multifamily properties uh, for a number of reasons. One is that the developer needs to make a profit out of this to put a, a residential street in the area and develop these uh, these homes. It's not inexpensive to develop property in today's marketplace. I appreciate how much work they've put into the property at this point in time. We've never seen this kind of, of, uh, of detail, especially with stormwater, uh, and I appreciate that because that's a neighborhood concern, and I think you've addressed that concern well. The last thing is that we've approved this before, uh, the same type of project in the same area. It's, um, it's a, a residential area surrounded by a residential area. Uh, commercial belongs on the, on, the, uh, on the street side of this where, where it's gonna remain. Uh, this property seems to fit well into the, into the neighborhood. Amen. Uh, Alderman Engelhardt. Uh, I uh, wanna point at something else. I rather like the idea that the uh, commercial front, the way this is working out, uh, would not present another building right on Janesville Road and that street entrance there, uh, especially provided if the section that was going to the to the neighbor commercial uh, is that to be sold to them or what what is the plan there? Uh, yeah, they've been working early on with those neighboring businesses. Those businesses right now always had a handshake agreement with the Ingold family that there's actually a driveway to service the businesses that's 100% on the Ingold property. And then there's some parking that those businesses use that are also on the, on the Ingold property. And um, when those business, it's actually one owner that owns both buildings, when they uh, heard about this, you know, um, they, I don't want to speak for them, but they seemed um, concerned with what does this mean for our access point. I know that some of their tenants, I've specifically heard from the owner that their tenants were very concerned about having, instead of having two access points that they have now, they would lose just down to one, and the one that's left isn't really wide. Um, so right away, they reached out to the developer. I'm not sure if they'll reach out to them, which way it, it worked. Um, the tentative talk, and I don't want to speak for them, but the tentative talk was, yeah, that that little outlot that's remaining on the east side of the driveway would potentially be sold to or some kind of agreement with the business owner to the east since their access point does have to go away because the new road's there, mm -hmm. and that the talk would be having a connection off the new road that would then allow them access in two points again um, and allow some parking to remain is my basic understanding. Now, there's two buildings in front of, is there two buildings existing in the commercial area now? Um, yes. Yes, yeah, to the, to the east, and they are both they have the same owner. 
they're under one owner, mm -hmm. all one property or two, two legal properties. Two legal properties. They share like a parking and they share their access points. And what would be the aspect in the future of them uh, possibly, since those are not great big buildings or anything, the possibility that they would redevelop and want to change that picture of that altogether. Yeah, someone someone could if they wanted to. It'd be a somewhat desirable commercial site for something bigger possibly there, right? Yes, it, it could be. It could be. And adding that little sliver would um, enhance that. If, yeah, if the biggest th I think the biggest thing is the idea of access and parking. That that's mm -hmm. at least what I've heard from the neighboring business owner. Okay. Um, I tend towards the idea of reducing it to the 16 instead of the 18 too. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Alderman Wolf? Um, you know, we did compare this to uh, the Woods Road area. And I think that it, it's completely different. First of all, you touched on the private road, which, which uh, was in the original plans, and that's also what's off of Woods. Um, you know, we're going to put this in as more cost to the city and so on as the condo development. Um, I, I don't like the idea of a, of a public road in there. I, I prefer a private road. Um, and, and, and again, if we're going to compare it to what's going on with Woods, that's what they have there. And, and uh, you know, I, I think we, we, made, we started making these uh, exceptions more and more. And, and I went back to the last meeting we had. We had the, the Parkland Mall I brought up. We, we made an exception for height in there because that was a focal point. And, and as Neil said, it's kind of our downtown area. Uh, so we made an exception there, and then the last meeting we made an exception on height out of that area for a new project that actually I was against because of the height, just on principle, because we're, we we're developing and changing things and, and rezoning things, and we're doing it, I mean, across the street, along the lake, they're going to redo that. That's been in plan. It's being redone again. I don't even know what the plans are right now, what, what we said we would like to see to where they are now. I, I'm not sure it's acceptable for B over there. Um, so I'm not sure if, if, if the zoning's right on this, as, as Deb pointed out. Um, uh, there's a reason why they're putting in oversized ponds, which I appreciate that, that you're doing that and you're taking the time to look at it, but there has to be a reason for that. Uh, and, and the reason is it's probably pretty darn wet there, like most of Muskego is. But uh, um, that's, that's a good thing. But I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of hung up on, on uh, you know, how many and how the footage of, of green space and, and it's nice the ponds are going, I like that. I, I'm kind of hung up on, on the public road versus the private road as well. I, I like to see people coming in and doing development and start taking responsibility on some of that stuff. That's it. That's a, a single shot in and out. Um, I think Bay Breeze, that's all private roads, right? It's private roads. Mm -hmm. um, and that's right across the street as well. So we're using the same area, but we're, we're going to take it over for, for public. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure where I'm at on this uh, situation right now. Uh, Adam, did you bring the uh, code section? Because I forgot to bring it. <clears throat> yeah. Because I need to them. explain. Well, if it's for fire issues, last time uh, they were going to have a side road going out on the hill, which was kind of crazy. Okay. Uh, Th that, that was never part of a plan that was actually submitted or approved. Yeah, there was always the plan that was approved in 15 had two single family lots there that have been built on for a few years. That was never a plan, and no one was in favor of that when that no, came up. We would never want to put access point, traffic on a residential right. street, not a county highway. Okay, so Adam and I have been in communication with Jeff, our city attorney, who can't be here this evening. He's out on medical leave. Um, and as far as I don't necessarily have to go through all of it, but if there is a if this rezoning request, whether it's 18 or 16, um, fails, uh, we will ha I will have to go down line. You'll have to state your reason. It's going to have to be based on code or, or we're in violation because there's been an approval already in 2015 for the rezoning. And there, with there's a private no, road. With a private road. And that, that, that's that has different. nothing to do with the, the code. Well, that's what we approved, though. The law is the law. I'm just telling you. Jeff told me. The law is the law, and it has to be based on, on that. So if it fails, I have to ask each one of you who voted no to give your reason based on the code. Are we and, voting tonight? And Adam Kent, yes, yeah, this are. is the final vote. Okay, then I, want to make, then I want to make a motion. Uh, An amendment ahead. to the motion. What do you want to do? I want to defer it till all seven people are here. Hmm. So you're making a motion to defer? 
correct because there's only five of us here and I think that uh, if we're going to get into legal aspects and we're going to make a, a major statement about the, the legal part of this, I think we all should be involved in it. Good. And then we can get a written one too. No, I think or, it we should get be a written done legal. in person. Well, I can't make an attorney be here if he's in. No, no, not that. I'm talking oh, about all seven. <laughs> you meant the aldermen. Oh, I'm sorry. Alderman, I meant seven, I'd get seven, a legal seven, written seven, opinion seven, then. Oh, okay. No, I'm just saying if we're going to have to state something legally, we okay, should all be put here. Put your motion out there. It, just defer it until uh, all the members are available for the meeting. Well, you, to the next meeting. To the next meeting, right. Second. Um, okay, we've got a motion and a second. Um, is there discussion on a deferral? I can't remember. We did. There that. was approval for discussion. Okay. There's no discussion on deferral, so it, uh, yay or nay. So, um, do you want to do roll call? Is that what you want to do on this? Okay. Alderperson Kabaki? No. Alderperson Engelhart? No. Alderperson Kapusta? Yes. Alderperson Boardman? Yes. Alderperson Moore? Yes. There are three in favor and two opposed. Okay, this item is deferred till the next meeting. Um, don't know that date off the top of my head. January 14th. January 14th. Yep. Okay. Um, new business. Resolution 101, 2019. Approval of a certified survey map and condominium plat for Home Path Financial. So based on this, uh, I'd be looking for a motion to defer. Motion to defer. Second. Oh, I'm sorry. No, do they have to, to defer? Okay, you have, bring, you have to put it on the floor as approval first. <laughs> Move to approve. Second. Thank you. Now, is there a motion to defer? Motion to defer. Second. Until next meeting. Yep. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You made the motion I'm to sorry. Second. I'm sorry. I did. Okay. <laughs> so it is deferred. Um, consent agenda. Mm -hmm. Approval of operator licenses. Resolution 97, approval to terminate the Intergovernmental Cooperative Agreement Recycling Program <coughs> Consolidation with Waukesha County and allow <coughs> the city to serve as an independent responsible unit recycling program. Resolution 98, approval of certified survey map, John Jewell. Resolution 99, approval of certified survey map, Howard Schneider and Adam Capusta. Resolution 100, approval of certified survey map, Home Path Financial. Resolution 102, appointment of election officials by the mayor of the city of Muskego. Resolution 103, approval of reduction of cash deposit for Maki Properties, BVLC Harvest Court. And Resolution 104, approval of amendment to the intermunicipal agreement between the Town of Norway Sanitary District Number 1 and the city of Muskego. Motion to approve and gross. Second. Mayor, I'd like to recuse myself from uh, Resolution 99. Then we have to pull that one out separate if you're going to... Okay, so we're going to pull out... Which one? 99? 99. Yep. Shouldn't you pull out 100, too? Pardon me? Shouldn't we pull out 100 as well? 100? You, you can. It relates to home path. It has nothing to do with the condo plat. What this one was, That's just to remind the, uh, you, there was a little yeah. gap that was found that St. Leonard owns it. Um, it's just... And there's no right-of-way dedicated there. They dedicate the right-of-way, and then the two gaps were talked about going to the neighbor. If it's approved and if the development just, let's say, doesn't go forward or something, they don't have to record it. It doesn't mean it has to go through, okay. but it doesn't have any bearing on unit count. It's not using the density, so it, it, it could exist on its own. There's nothing really to do with the condo other than a water main okay, might so go in no there. objections, we'll leave that in. So we're just removing 99. Thank you. So now <clears throat> we have a motion and a second for all items except for number 99. Yes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Those bills are approved, and then we have Resolution 99, approval of the certified survey map for Howard Schneider and Adam Capusta. Move to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And the record reflects that Alderman Capusta abstained. Thank you. Or, uh, did I say that right? Abstained? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, where am I at here? Review or report? Uh, review committee reports. Finance Committee, November 12th. Plan Commission, November 5th. Parks and Conservation Committee, November 5th. And then approval, uh, license approval. Do you do those two? Approval of change of agent uh, for the Class A license held by GPM Southeast LLC doing business as Jets for Amber Zubricki. Is there a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It is approved. 
approval of a Class B license to sell fermented malt beverages and intoxicating liquor and Class A dance hall license for Parkland Lodge, LLC, doing business as Lucky's at the Lodge on Janesville Road. The agent is Andrew Jacobson. Motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? What does, what does the dance hall part of it entail? Uh, it, allow, uh, it allows live music. Yeah. Allows live music. Outside or inside? Inside. inside. They'd have to get a permit for outside. A separate permit. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Is approved. Uh, voucher approval. Motion to approve utility vouchers in the amount of $30,491.49. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Is approved. Motion to approve tax vouchers in the amount of $1,530. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's approved. Motion to approve general fund vouchers in the amount of $1,449,725.49. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's approved. <clears throat> Move to approve wire transfers in the amount of $349,557.77. Any discussion? I'm sorry, who seconded? Rob. Oh, okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's approved. Uh, no city official reports, uh, no communications or miscellaneous. Uh, then are there any updates from any of the liaisons? Okay. With that, uh, future agenda items, reconsiderations. I have a comment. I uh, drove up uh, Janesville Road, and the Christmas lights are all lit up. I mean, yep. it, it's, they look pretty good. Um, a little generic. I mean, we didn't know what we were getting into. I, I'd like to see if we expand on this to add some colors in there. But uh, other than that, I think uh, it's something different we haven't seen before and kind of adds to the holiday feeling. So... Looks nice. Okay. Could I add a suggestion on that? Thing? <laughs> this is it's two parts to buy that. Two parts to get those. We're doing some this year and some next year. Was that what we? There's proved? more money for more. What, yeah. Will yeah. they be the same? Well, that's what I was mentioning. Yeah, that we should so take what a look. What are you saying? At. Then are we going to get color and mix? <laughs> this them? isn't on the agenda. I'm oh, just not a comfortable. Comment. Just a comment. Talking about it. So. Future talk then. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned.